Hey guys, Luke from Metz here. Today we're going to talk about glycolysis. Uh, we've had a couple of questions come through from students asking about what's, what's to go with pyruvic acid and how, how does lactic acid get turned back into glucose and all that sort of stuff. So what I want to do to start with is just talk about what you actually need to know for the purposes of VCEPE and then we'll go into a bit of the, the more detailed chemistry just so you can understand it with a bit more detail. Right? So this is all you need to know. Right? Glycolysis literally means, that lysis means breakdown, so it's a breakdown of glycogen which goes to glucose obviously glucose gets transformed down to pyruvate which is just a simple glucose molecule it's just under half a glucose so it's a more simple form if there is oxygen present we're going to go into the mitochondria where this thing called the krebs citric acid cycle and the electron transport chain start to do a whole lot of complicated processes with enzymes and the end result is that it spits out 36 to 38 atp this is our aerobic glycolysis if there is not oxygen present, then this pyruvate is going to form lactic acid, which we know breaks down into lactate and hydrogen. The hydrogen component is the fatiguing component, that's the acidic part, and lactate can actually get turned back in to pyruvate and or glucose. This gives us two to three ATP. This is the anaerobic glycolysis system. Really simply, lactate here, it will come back up to pyruvate, it can get turned back into pyruvate, and then, if oxygen is present, it can then go into the, the Krebs and electron transport stage and get used for aerobic glycolysis. Or if we don't need, um, the, if we don't need the ATP, because maybe we've finished our event and we're just back at rest, then we can go back and turn into a glucose. Okay, that's a really simple, that's all you need to know for glycolysis. What we're going to do now is come over to this board and talk about the detailed chemistry. I like to tell people, like, that that's all you need to know, just remember that. However, if you can have a deeper understanding of how it actually works, then you'll never forget it. First of all, on this side here, Tyler, um, these are some key words that we need to understand. We have glucose. The chemical formula for glucose is six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. Pyruvic acid, three carbons, four hydrogens, and three oxygens, very similar to glucose. This can break down, just like lactic acid can break off, pyruvic acid will break down to a hydrogen ion, which is acidic, obviously, and pyruvate, which is three carbons, three hydrogens, and three oxygens. Cool. Another one, lactic acid, all, all have heard of that. That is three carbons, six hydrogens, and three oxygens. Breaks down to lactate, which is one less hydrogen, because that comes off here. And the very last thing is acetyl. You might not have even heard of this, acetyl-CoA. All we need to know, two carbons, three hydrogens, and one oxygen. Now, I don't care if you remember the chemistry. You don't need to know it. You don't even need to know it at all. But for the purposes of what I want you to get from this, these are all very similar. They all have carbon, they all have hydrogen, they all, all have oxygen. They are very similar in their chemical makeup. Okay, let's come over here. <clears throat> Glycolysis. Uh, this actually occurs in the cytosol, which is just a fluid around the mitochondria. We'll come to the mitochondria later. What we get from glycolysis is four ATP. We actually only net two, I'll come to that in a sec. We get two NADH, really not important, and we get two pyruvate. All right, let's go to the glucose. We know it's C6H12O6. What happens is this glucose splits in half and we get two pyruvic acids, which is C3, H4O3. So take a look. All right, we had six carbons here. Now we've got three and three, so they've been conserved. We've got six oxygen, so we've got three and three, so it's conserved. But we've only got four and four. We've got eight hydrogens instead of 12. So we've, we've lost four hydrogens on the way down. Now, where these have gone, one is free floating on either side, one and two. Okay, the other one is NAD to NADH. This is used in the next cycle when, the, when we get to the mitochondria, when we talk about the Krebs cycle. So all I want you to understand here is we've got one hydrogen here, so that NAD, we give that a hydrogen. So we've got one hydrogen, one hydrogen, one hydrogen, and one hydrogen. So there's, there's those four hydrogens that we lost before. So it's all conserved. Let's get down to here. Oh, sorry, before we get down to here, this actually requires <clears throat> two ATP. We actually lose energy because we can't just break down something magically. It actually requires energy. But then when we get down to the two pyruvic acids, we get four ATP. So the net for the whole thing is two, two to three, depending if it's glucose or glycogen, which we know that is why the anaerobic glycolysis system yields two to three ATP. All right, let's get back down to here. We have pyruvic acid, C3H4O3. Uh, all we have to do is break this down into pyruvate and hydrogen. So the difference between pyruvic and pyruvic acid is just one hydrogen. So we break that down. Okay. Uh, same on the other side. <clears throat> now from here, we either go through an aerobic pathway or we go through an anaerobic pathway. I'm going to start with the anaerobic pathway. If there is not sufficient oxygen, then pyruvate or pyruvic acid can go to lactic acid. The way this is going to do it, let's, let's break this down. So let's just combine these two back together. So if I put that onto here, 
we go to H4, which now is pyruvic acid, as you can see, H3, uh, sorry, C3, H4O3. So let's just get rid of that for now. Now, what do we need to do to get from pyruvic acid to lactic acid? Let's take a look over here. Lactic acid is three carbons, six hydrogens, and three oxygens. So all we need to do is find two hydrogens. Now, this process up here that we were talking about before, the, we only use this hydrogen and we only use this NADH if we go through the aerobic glycolysis system. But we, don't, we can't go through the aerobic system. There's not sufficient oxygen. So we're going to use these and turn them and, and bring them to the pyruvic acid. That gets us to five. And this one here gets us to six. Okay, so we donate these two. Now we get C. I need to get another pen. Keep going. <coughs> So now we have C3, H6, O3, which is lactic acid. Cool. Lactic acid. We then know this can further break down into lactate and hydrogen. Hydrogen is acid and lactate is just lactic acid with one less hydrogen. So C3, H5, O3. It's all conserved, all right? Gets us two to three ATP. Let's go on, that happens on both sides. Let's go across to the aerobic pathway. So let's say we do have sufficient oxygen, okay? What we really need to do is we need to get this pyruvate into this acetyl coenzyme A. This is a chemical fuel now. And you'll see that we basically just need to get that carbon down to two. So come back. At the moment we've got three carbons, three hydrogens, and we have three oxygens. So how can we get to two carbons, three hydrogens, and one oxygen? Well, the difference is only one carbon and two oxygen. So what is one carbon and two oxygen? One carbon and two oxygen is CO2. We know that's a byproduct of the aerobic glycolysis system. So now we have acetyl-CoA. We can come into the Krebs cycle. This hydrogen can come in the Krebs cycle. This NADH can come in the Krebs cycle. This hydrogen here can come in the Krebs cycle. It goes through a whole lot of complicated processes, gets transferred up to the electron transport stage, and we get 36 to 38 ATP. 38 ATP. Fairly straightforward. Um, you might be saying, hey, how does lactate get, like I said before, lactate can be used as fuel. So how can we use lactate as fuel? Again, look at the chemical compounds. What's the difference between lactate and pyruvate? It's only two hydrogens, all right? Lactate has three hydrogens. This one has five hydrogens. So I need to donate these ones back, just the reverse process. This one comes all the way back to the NAD Sorry, the NAD, and turns it to NADH. And then we have a free floating one here as well. So once we get back to here, this is now pyruvate, yeah? That is pyruvate. Because that is now three pyruvate. Excuse my spelling. We have pyruvate and we get to here. If oxygen's available, then we just do the we just go through this pathway like we did before, turn it into acetyl CoA, and up we go. If we don't need it, then we just go the reverse process. Do it both sides and we get back to glucose. It all, it all balances out with the chemical formulas. Now this is obviously well and truly above what you need to know, but what I'm trying to get you to understand with this, just like with physics, that the starting result is the same as the end result. There's just a whole lot of enzymatic processes that are taking hydrogens and changing oxygens and so on and so forth. They're not magically adding any organic compounds. It's all balanced. Um, and the difference between pyruvate and lactic acid and pyruvic acid and acetyl-CoA and glucose are just very small changes in the carbon, the hydrogen, and the oxygen. They all have the same chemical compounds and they are very, very similar. All right, last thing, let's go back over here. I think that's all I need to cover for that. <clears throat> beta oxidation, again, you don't need to understand beta oxidation, but what you do need to know is that, that fat takes longer and more oxygen to break down than a glucose. So the end result, Acetyl, we need to get acetyl. Uh, we need to get down to a two carbon element. I don't care if it's a glucose or a triglyceride. We need to get a six carbon glucose or a 24 carbon triglyceride or a 48 chain triglyceride, whatever it is. We need to get these down to two. So when we're talking about glucose, it's pretty straightforward. Split six in half, we get three and three. Cool. We then, uh, as we said before, same as over there, CO2, let's get rid of one of the carbon through oxidation. CO2, we get to the two change, two chains so that, that can then go into the Krebs cycle, the oxygen transport stage chain, and we get 36 to 38 ATP. Fairly straightforward. Then we go on the triglyceride side, beta oxidation. This occurs in the cytosol as well, in the fluid of the mitochondria. It still needs to go through the Krebs and the electron transport chain, just like this. 
but you can see the extra work that's needed to take place to get down to a two carbon molecule. 24 divided by two, you go 12 and 12, six and six, three and three, CO2, we get down to two, okay? What you'll notice is we get what, two, four, six, eight, eight units of chemical energy here compared to only two. So once it goes through the Krebs and the electron transport chain, we get a whole lot more ATP, 441 ATP compared to 36 to 38. However, it takes a lot longer to get there in the first place. So the yield from fats is really, really high, but the rate is re relatively slow. That's why we would describe aerobic lipolysis as fairly slow, but then aerobic glycolysis is moderate because it's, it's still complex, but not as complex as this versus something like anaerobic glycolysis, which is very, very straightforward. It doesn't have to do any of these stages. It just gives us our two to three ATP plus some fatiguing byproducts. So again, the key takeaway is just understand glucose goes to pyruvate. If there's oxygen, we go through more complex processes and get 36 to 38 ATP. If it's not present, we get lactic acid. Lactate can be used as fuel through, through a reverse process. Hydrogen causes fatigue, only gives us two to three. But as you can see, the chemical equations, they all balance out, it all makes sense. Uh, the more chemical uh, split, the more splits we need to make in the carbon, such as a, such as a fat molecule, the longer it takes. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not magic. It's, it's all a very, um, a very logistic way to break down carbon. Like it makes sense. And um, hopefully that's clarified some of the differences between glucose, pyruvic acid, pyruvate, lactic acid, so on and so forth. Any questions, let us know. Otherwise, I'll speak to you again soon.